As you know, I've been working through the Commodore Plus 4 user's manual in an attempt to discover uh, what the Plus 4 was capable of because I never owned a Plus 4, but along the way I, I ran into Chapter 3. And some of you have probably been wondering, when's Chapter 3 ever coming? Well, here's the problem with Chapter 3. Chapter 3 is talking about using software. In order to use software, you really need a 1541, a disk drive of some kind. There is a specific disk drive available for the Plus 4, which I don't own. And you also need a data cassette. A data cassette uses these cassette tapes right here, and you would load those in there and you would play those and that loads into your Plus 4. Well, unfortunately, the version that I have, the C2N, is for the Commodore VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. And as we're going to discover, that doesn't work on the Plus 4. So also along the way, I had a 15 41 and I decided not to use it because this thing has never never been fired on since I've owned it I was afraid it wouldn't work plus I don't have a lot of floppies sitting around so if you watch my last video you'll see that I built the Pi 1541 and the Pi 1541 I have is based on the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Raspberry Pi Zero is a small form factor it works really well as you can see in my last video so make sure you hit below uh, to check out the link for that video oh and, and while you're down there go ahead and hit subscribe and uh, turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted when I continue the series and when chapter 3 finally releases but as you can see I've built this nice little 3D uh, printed case that'll be coming later we'll be talking about that in a future video so again you're going to want to hit that notification and subscribe button down below but today what i want to do was figure out how i could get these into there without an actual uh, data set that is uh, specific to the plus four because they're very hard to come by so in doing a bit of research what i learned is there's this wonderful device called a tapwino Tapwino is not based on the Raspberry Pi, but is based on the Arduino. How cool is that? We're using a Raspberry Pi as a 1541, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use an Arduino as a data cassette. And it really kind of matches, if you think about it. The 1541 is much more sophisticated than the data cassette or the data set, and the Raspberry Pi is more sophisticated than the Arduino. So it's really a great project. I had a blast. As a matter of fact, as you can see, while I've been talking, talking too much, I'm sure, that Fingers Malone loaded from an Arduino into the plus four and it's ready to go so today i'm going to show you how i put that together you're going to want to make sure and check out the companion blog post for this video because there's lots of additional tips and tricks i put in there but then i've also taken some of the original designs i tried to simplify it a little bit it's a simple project anyway if you're just curious about Arduinos and how they work, this is even just a great project for you because there's a lot of neat things that we do along the way. So I think it's going to be a fun video. Uh, there is some tedium in there, so if you want to fast forward a little bit through some of the soldering, I've tried to shorten it down a little bit, but not so short that you couldn't see the specifics in case you wanted to follow along. Stay what, I'm going to run a, a play a little bit of Fingers Malone here, and uh, you can get started on your own Tapwino project by continuing to watch the video. So I'll see you after the video. It all begins at the sweet little mirror, our sweet little Marie, who knows which one that is. And this is the Tapwino website. This is the Building Tapwino Release 2. This is from five years ago. So as I work through this, I'll be updating some of the materials I use. Uh, also on the site, you will notice that he goes, or she, I'm not sure who sweet little Marie is, goes from breadboard to Vero board. For this video, I'm going to focus solely on breadboard. I do have a plan much like the 1541, the Pi 1541, to convert from the breadboard to uh, either Vero board or some solderable breadboard, and then put that into a custom 3D printed case. So be on the lookout for that. So I will be using this as a guide. A uh, link for this will be in the video description below, but also check out my companion post because it will include additions that probably are not included on this page. And that's the hardware side. For the software side, you go to, need to go to Sweet Little Marie's GitHub page. I'll have that link again in the video description and everything's here. And this is so easy. You simply download, make a few corrections to the configuration file or modifications to the configuration file to show 
know which hardware you have installed. You throw that over to the Arduino. It's pretty simple. I'll demonstrate that process in the video, but those are the two pages that you need to get started. And those are the reference pages I used to get my Tapuino project started. Yeah, I'm not going to cover every one of these in detail, these items that you need for the Tapuino project, but be sure and check out my companion blog post at stephencombs.com where I have links to everything you need, as well as some commentary on each of the items and how to best use them. I do have my uh, schematic here from the website, so thanks to them for putting that together. We're going to start, obviously, with our breadboard, so I'm going to grab that right now. And it looks like my breadboard still had a resistor on there. Let's go ahead and pull that off. That is not the resistor we are looking for. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, place some of the larger items here and figure out how I'm going to, to put those together. This is the Arduino Nano right here. Push this in place. Now, my, my I guess I should show you this. My particular Nano has these header pins on top. You may purchase one that doesn't have it on top. Uh, you obviously are going to want one that has the header pins on the bottom, though, or it's not going to sit into the breadboard. That's not good. Yeah, looks like I'm going to have to use some headers. I do have some header pins here. I was not aware that the pins from this device right here would not fit in here. But what I do have is this header like that, and then I can put those into here, which will sit right in the breadboard. Although... Now they're popping up. What's going on? Oh, woe is me. Watch that. They just pop out. What is going on? All right, let's talk tail of a couple of breadboards here. If we look at here underneath the camera. Now you may remember I've been trying to insert this particular Arduino Nano into this board. I've been pushing. I've tried everything. It didn't go in. I got this one. I got it on here. I tried to push it in and it wouldn't go in. I mean, it is just not going in there at all. And I'm afraid if I keep pushing, I'm going to break the board. So I pulled out another breadboard. Here's a tr little troubleshooting tip for you. Um, I pulled out a breadboard. This is a smaller one. And uh, I just kind of put it right on top there. I'm going to move it over one more and watch what happens. It just fits really nicely in there. So it appears it's not the pins at all. As a matter of fact, I, I suspected this one should fit anyway. Uh, but what's really interesting is you remember this first one that I said it really wouldn't work well and the it just kept popping off of the breadboard check this out put it in this mini one right here and it's perfect it fits these are long pins so those do uh, kind of pop out however it works and so then what did I do I brought out another breadboard this one and I decided to try that one out and lo and behold if I take this Arduino I pop it onto this breadboard right where I want it and I push. Let me make sure I don't break that straight down. There it is. It's on the breadboard. So this breadboard will not accept for whatever reason um, these Arduinos. I, I guess the pins are too tight or maybe with some usage they'll uh, loosen up. But man, that just did not work for me. But at least now we can get the Tap Wino project started since we have the Arduino on a breadboard. So I could only buy these in this pack of 30, something like that. And uh, so um, let's see. Yeah, 30 pieces. So if anybody needs one of these, let me know. This is the 4N25 Octo something another. Okay, and with that, it looks like I have all the parts on the board now uh, except for the parts I don't want to mount on the board and now it looks like it's time to wire although I'm thinking I'm wondering should I go ahead and use jumpers for this I'm really kind of leaning towards that uh, because then that would give me some flexibility to move things around so I think I'm going to do that All right, there we go. Now we have the jumpers on both the LCD 
and the SD reader. That should make things easier as we start to wire. Oh, let's see, it always happens. Always miss a resistor. Got to get this resistor on the board here. I uh, thought I had all the components, but forgot I have that one little resistor. That is a 430 ohm resistor. And of course, I uh, couldn't buy just one, so I have lots of 430 ohm resistors. Not sure I'll ever use them. If you need a 430 ohm resistor to go with your 4N25, let me know. This way I don't have to read uh, resistor uh, bands. It's always a good idea. All right, and out of all of these, I need one. So it needs to be in line with this pen right here. So do I have those? You gotta be careful too, because I don't know if you could see that. I'm going to show you, but this is important. There is a pen one. You can see, barely see that little dot right there. And that is also on the board here. You can see that little dot right. Let's see. There we go. Get the light just right. Right there. So you got to be careful. You can't swap that around or it's not going to work. All right, now what I'm gonna do is start marking wires that I have connected so I can keep an eye on everything. So I've got a pink pen. I'm not sure if pink will show up well. Let's try a different color here. Let's grab this red one right here. So what I'm gonna do is I know I have done, for instance, uh, these ground wires right here. So I'm going to put a big X that that is complete. Um, I've done these four wires right here, connecting the IC or I2C and the LCD uh, to the board here. Uh, looks like everything's correct, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark through those. So those are done. So I'm gonna use that system to kind of help track as I go through the rest of these. to the uh, push button switches and probably to the signal into the uh, the 4-2 or the 4, 4N25. I'll get that right one of these days. So there's an odd arrangement here. Um, he's chosen to ground from pen to pen to pen to pen. I'm going to go ahead just for consistency. Uh, I think it's going to be better for me in the way I think. I'm going to go ahead and ground these to the ground rod so that I get those right because there's a little overlapping weirdness here. If I just take from pen to ground, pen to ground, the other thing too, he's using um, the four pen momentary switches and I only have the two pen because he, you'll notice he's not even using these legs so I chose the two pens so I am going to go ahead and uh, again go from ground to here
Okay, with that, it's time to get a little bite of lunch. So now it's time to prepare our software. We'll grab the software package from GitHub. We'll do a search for Tapwino. There's only one project available with Tapwino. We'll download the zip file to our computer. It's a pretty short download. We'll go ahead and display that in our file manager. And then we need to extract that folder and we'll do that right here. Now, when we extract it, you'll see that we have a folder that we need to rename and we need to rename that Tapwino. We need to get rid of that master after the name. That will allow us when we click inside to utilize all the files. But first we need to make a change to a configuration file. So what I'm doing is copying that configuration file, renaming it to get rid of the example portion of the file name. And now we're going to load the Tapwino file. That will load our Arduino IDE, and it will also load all the associated files. You'll see all these .h files, and the one there is one that we want, the configuration file that we changed the name for. We need to make some changes in that file so that we tell it what kind of LCD screen we have installed and what language. So now we'll save that file, and the next thing we need to do is upload this to the Arduino. We'll select our Arduino Uno. We'll make sure we have the correct serial port selected. We'll click the upload button and then we'll watch the bits go through the air and into the Arduino. You'll see I have a low memory available. It didn't cause me any problems. So if you receive that, you should not have any concerns either. Once that's complete, I can exit out of the software and then drop files directly onto the micro SD card. You'll find information on that step at the companion blog post. Of course, I would blunder some wires, and I did. I got a few of the wires crossed. However, I think I've got them all in place now, and what we're going to do is we're going to apply power and see if the Tapwino works. Now, what I've not done is I've not added the connector that goes into the Commodore computer, in my case, a plus four. It should work without that. It should go ahead and fire up, should recognize the USB, micro USB that's here, if I can get that under there for you, that's in here, I've already placed that in here, and we should get something on the screen here. Now, before we do that, let me go ahead and pull off the protective cover on the screen. There is a little piece of plastic, I wanna get that off of there for you. Go ahead and put that down, and now, I'm gonna take this port right here, I'm going to plug it in here. That's going to provide power to the Arduino, which will also provide power to the LCD screen and to the card reader right here. All right, keep those fingers crossed. Here we go. Initializing version 2.8 and select. That's pretty exciting. Okay. Now, these buttons should switch mode. I'm not sure what the buttons do. I'm just going to press buttons for now, just to make sure everything's working. And, oh, there you go. So we're selecting, I have uh, two tap files. Looks like it's trying to load that particular tap file right now. We don't want to do that. I believe this one, nope, not that one. One of these exits out of that. There we go. Aborted is the second one right there. So you can select file. Maybe it's these. There we go. We can go through here and we can select the tap files that are on here. There's only two on here right now. That's exciting. Does this go up? Yep. So this seems to go down, this goes up, and this would actually select. So if I wanted to select, say this Kung Fu file, I could select this button, it's loading. And now what I would do uh, on my Commodore device is uh, I should have had the command in before I put this in. So, oh, I'm excited. So now we'll go into the next phase. And that is uh, soldering a connector that I can use on my Commodore Plus 4. Okay, the next thing I want to do is see if I can get this connector right here that I purchased or under here, wherever you want to look at that. 
this is a seven pin den connector it's designed to work with the commodore plus four the commodore plus four uh, used a different cassette adapter port uh, or plug than the Commodore VIC-20, the Commodore 128, or the Commodore 64. It used a connector similar to this one right here. So it would plug right in. So they did that evidently uh, to save some money because this uh, was cheaper, plus they needed some room on the back. They didn't have a whole lot of room left over on the back of the Plus 4. So um, there's a lot of ways I could have done this, uh, but I decided to go ahead and get the plug. Uh, it, it's it's something and it's going to be something to try and solder this so let me break this apart so you can see what this looks like uh, first thing I need to do is kind of pull this out from the sleeve here and so that just separates easily it took me a while to figure that out this just pulls out from this sleeve so we can put that aside for now and then if we look inside we can break these two halves apart and take those plastic pieces get those out of the way and then you've got this shielding right here that is uh, used to help uh, stabilize the plug and also provide that nice solid seating but when you you can also break that apart and when you break that apart you do that here and you'll find that you are left with this now, let me put that here, this plug right here. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Let me go ahead and get this out of here so you can see it. If I remember, this just pops right out. There we go. And this is where it gets really interesting. Those are some small pins to solder on. And the um, good thing about it is they are passed through, but I'm going to have to be very careful because I worry that any extra heat will warp this casing and these so i probably should get something that's going to support that maybe some blue tack or something so i'm going to, have to think about that for a little bit but uh, that's the plug we're going to be using and i thought i would share that with you and show you how to break that down uh, so that you could see what you're up against if you decide to do this project for a plus four now obviously it would be a lot easier to solder to these pads uh, for a, a vic 20 or c64 or 128 uh, tapuino installation but of course me i gotta go the hard way so i've got this to deal with so the other thing i have to figure out is what kind of cable i'm going to connect to this and a little reading online tells me that a cat5 cable would be perfect for this so what i'm going to do is cut the ends off of this see what i have inside strip that out a little bit it looks like i have plenty of wire i need seven uh, cat5 will have more than seven so i should be good to go there and then i can figure out what my pin colors are going to be and uh, this is nice too because the internal pins or the internal wire already has color code so I'll be able to track which pin on the other end so that's the next step time to break this thing apart and see what it looks like. do this the hard way because I don't have a cat5 cable uh, tool right tool for the right job that sure would be nice right now people are probably yelling at me right now no don't do it that way yeah 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 I get it one two three four five six seven eight one to grow on there we go perfect the other thing I've got to do is I've got to figure out the pinout difference between the seven pin and uh, what this is. So I'll have to look online to find out what these pins are, what connects, because if we look at our diagram, our schematic, luckily I have this. So uh, I know I need the data cassette or the data set read. I need the data set motor. I need the data set sense. I need control zero, control one, data set right. I need a five volt and a ground. Those will be the easiest ones. Uh, probably to find the rest of it I'm going to figure out so I'm going to see if I can find a, a guide online to the seven pin connector on the plus four. wires are going to have to be 10 because this is not a solid wire this is wire um, 
fibers or frays or small wires or lots of thin wire to make one big wire or tiny wire. So uh, all of this will have to be tinned. I'll have to work on that uh, when I solder. But so far, that's pretty good. So now we'll just repeat that on this side. Eh, I'm not going to repeat that on this side right now. We'll save that for later. We'll make sure we get this thing soldered to this. Oh, can you even imagine? Can you even imagine what that's going to be like? I can, and I'm not looking forward to it. All right, you'll see I place the DIN connector into some putty to hold it while I am soldering. And you'll also notice I have my Cat5 cables. These cables are really difficult to solder because they're multi copper thin wire, so I'm having to twist those around. I'll also tin those wires, which means I'll put some solder on each one. That will make it easier for me to solder them to those teeny tiny DIN connector pins. Big shout out to awsm.de for this tape connector guide. Without it, I would have continued to struggle to figure out what my problem was with my connector because I got the pins backwards. Check out my companion blog post for that complete story. This probably goes without saying, but don't forget to put your cable connector cover back on before you do your soldering. Let me just reiterate again, take a look at this guide before you do any soldering and then also grab your notebook and prepare and plan to make sure you get the wires correct the first time. Okay, now we're going to pin or solder these pins, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to these header pins so that this header pin can just plug into a breadboard. I've got a little uh, alligator clip here just to help keep these spread apart. I think I've got them in the right order, but I'll go ahead and go back to my uh, references here to make sure that I've got the right ones and that's sitting over here to the side. It's pretty noisy right now. You'll hear I've got a couple of fans going on. First of all, I've got a right over here. I've got a uh, air filter that's going to take the solder away and uh, clean that air up. But before I do that, I've also pulled out this noisy little guy. This is uh, from an old Mac laptop and what it's basically doing is sitting underneath the solder area and pulling that air away from here over to the air filter that's over here just to kind of keep the area cleaned up. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here and we'll start soldering these wires to these breadboard pins.
right, this is a big moment. We are going to plug this header pin and it is going to allow us to connect our Tapuino to our plus four. Now I have a seventh pin on here. I'm gonna get rid of that eventually, but for now I'm gonna leave it because I may use this cable for other projects and it would be nice to have all seven pins wired up. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this into the breadboard and that'll just plug in directly right in uh, below the connector wires that you see, the multicolored wires. And then we're gonna grab our DIN connector and we're gonna plug it into the back of the plus four. Let me get that around here so you can see it. That'll snap right into place. And here we go. We're going to uh, turn on power and see if we have power to the tap we know. Perfect, and it's initializing. You'll see version 2.8, and now we're ready to use the Tapuino. But before we do, especially on the Commodore Plus 4, we need to visit Options, Machine, C64, we need to change to C16, and now we can use it with a Plus 4 or C16 computer. All right, let's go ahead and load the software into the, wait a minute, wait, where, 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 where's the tape? Of course. Don't forget, you need to find some .tap files and put those on your micro SD card. I explain how to go through that process at the companion blog post at stephencombs.com slash tapwino-1. On the micro SD card that I have, I have a couple of games. We are going to try and load a game now. I have, first of all, I'm going to select the game on the tapwino using my controls and uh, the four buttons are described on the companion blog post so you know what they do. It is pretty intuitive. I'll hit the load command. When it says press play on the tape, I just simply press the first button and it searches. Now I've edited this down to be a little bit faster, but it is real time. So it will take about the same amount of time as it would on a regular data set to load software. Now you'll see right now it just found Exorcist on the tap we know now it's going to start loading it so we'll see another blank screen here in just a second and you'll see that this particular game is using the nova load which is a speed loader which makes things load a bit faster but again with the edits this is probably half the time it took normally I did want you to see kind of what happens as it loads. You'll notice that it is pretty traditional as it was with a regular data set, especially with Nova load. You see the border is flashing to let us know that something is loading. So we'll go ahead and continue to watch the border. And there we go. And we've got the sound of the game called The Exorcist. Let's just go ahead and give this a shot, shall we? Okay, let's go ahead and try and load another game here. And it's, once again, it's searching. And this time we're going to play a game called Icicle Works. Once again, we have Nova Load and we'll notice that our border will start to flash indicating that the program is loading. And here we are, we have Icicle Works Commodore Presents 1985 from Commodore Business Machines in the UK. And uh, you'll see we get a loading screen while it's still loading the remaining software. And here we have Icicle Works. We can use keyboard controls or joystick controls. I have no earthly idea how to play this. And uh, uh, I'm just gonna stop right now because I don't know what to do and uh, we have other things to do. So let's get back to the project. Because the next thing we wanna do is we wanna know, can we save our own software to the Tapuino? So what I'm doing is typing in our famous retro combs kind of hello world basic program. Let's see, go to 10, there we go. And let's list that, you see we have that, let's run it. Of course, the fabulous retro combs go scrolling across the screen. Now, we're going to try and save that to our data set. We'll hit save and we'll give it a name. We'll call it eh, retro combs, seems to make sense here. And now it says press play and record. Now we've got some options we need to hit on the tap. We know when you tell it we're in record mode, we're also going to go into automatic mode. So it will just give it its own name on the tap. We know, and it's naming the tap. We know file, not the actual file name for the basic program. So you'll see it saving. 
We'll list, let's new it out and see if it worked. And there we go. We've cleared out the program. Now let's see if we can load it back from the tap we know. Put it in play mode, press play. And it's searching. It found retro combs, it's loading. Let's check it out and see if it's in there. And it is, we've got it, run. And there we go. So our Tapwino is working to both load and save programs. Perfect. So that completes the Tapwino project. I just love this project. I have to admit this got to, this hit all the buttons for me. It hit my retro computing button. It hit my physical computing and Arduino button. It hit my electronics buttons. It's a great project. I want to thank sweet little Marie for the wonderful uh, website that was available for me to start my own project. Also along with the software that they have prepared for the Arduino. As I mentioned frequently throughout the video, make sure you check out the companion blog post for this particular episode. You're gonna find a lot more information that's gonna be helpful if you decide to tackle this project yourself. So as always, make sure you hit subscribe below, hit those notifications. And now that I have a replacement for an actual 1541 through my RPi or my Pi 1541 and the data set through the Tapuino, I can now release chapter three. That should drop in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to continuing my journey through the Commodore Plus 4 user's manual and I hope you'll join me too. So, Retrocombs, out. <laughs>